In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the number of ATP molecules produced during beta oxidation. This is for fatty acid molecules with even number carbon atoms. Let's start with a bit of theory, and this part's important. Beta oxidation is a mitochondrial process that converts fatty acid molecules into acetyl groups attached to coenzyme A. Acetyl-CoA then enters the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, where it's oxidized to carbon dioxide and water, and the energy released is captured in the form of ATP molecules, in addition to the reduction of electron carriers such as NAD plus and FAD that are reduced into NADH and FADH2, respectively. The NADH and FADH2 generated by the citric acid cycle are in turn used during the oxidative phosphorylation pathway to generate even more energy-rich ATP molecules. The first question reads, how much ATP is formed when myristic acid, a 14 carbon molecule, undergoes beta oxidation? Myristic acid is shown on your screen and as you can tell each of these vertices represents one carbon atom. So we have a carbon here, here, and so on. The first step in beta oxidation is to activate the fatty acid and this requires one molecule of ATP. And this molecule is hydrolyzed to AMP plus 2 phosphates. As a result of ATP going to AMP and 2 phosphates, for energy balance purposes, it's considered that two ATPs are consumed in this process. So right from the get-go, there's an investment of two ATP molecules. In step number two, beta oxidation occurs, and this is a multi-step process. It's outlined below, it's a complicated process, but we won't be going through the details. All you need to know is that for each round of beta oxidation, two carbon atoms are cleaved from the fatty acid chain. So for example, in the first round, these two carbons will be cleaved, then these two in the second round, and so on. So let's find out how many rounds we need. This is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, and six. What's special about the sixth round is that after you cleave the carbons here, you'll actually be left with two acetyl groups. This one will be one of them, and this will be the other. So you need six rounds, technically, to cleave 14 carbon molecules into seven acetyl groups. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The math here is simple. You take the number of carbons in this fatty acid, in our case it's 14, and you divide it by two. If you do that, you end up with seven, and that's exactly how many acetyl groups we're left with, seven. What's interesting is that the number of rounds is six as opposed to seven. So we have seven acetyls formed, and this took six rounds because that last round produces two acetyl groups. And for reference sake, acetyl looks like this. Acetyl attached to coenzyme A looks like this, where this part is right here. And everything, including this S, is coenzyme A. Now what's interesting about beta oxidation is that if you take a look at this step right here, you'll notice that for every round, NAD plus is reduced into NADH. So for every round, we have one NADH molecule. In addition, FAD becomes FADH2. One FADH2. These molecules then go on to oxidative phosphorylation, where they contribute to the formation of ATP. And in fact, some sources say that one FADH2 molecule will produce up to 1.5 ATPs, whereas NADH produces up to 2.5 ATP. And don't forget that the acetyl-CoA contributes to oxidative phosphorylation, forming 10 ATP. Other sources say that FADH2 contributes to 2 ATP, whereas NADH contributes to 3 ATP, whereas the acetyl-CoA for this ratio is 12 ATP. I'll be showing you both scenarios for this question. Let's pretend that we took this route. Since we undergo six rounds, we multiply this by six, we multiply this by six, and this by seven, because there are seven acetyl-CoA molecules. Similarly, we do the same thing here. We multiply this by six, 
this by 6, and this by 7. So let's go ahead and find out how many ATP molecules are formed here. We'll multiply and sum these up. 1.5 times 6 plus 2.5 times 6 plus 10 times 7. This gives us 94 and we'll subtract 2 because of the initial activation. That's 92 ATP molecules. If we take these numbers instead, bracket 2 times 6 plus 3 times 6 plus 12 times 7, this gives us 114 minus 2, and that's 112 ATP molecules. That's the answer to question number 1. In question number two, they ask how much ATP is formed when a 12 carbon molecule undergoes beta oxidation. If you would like to see the answer to this, make sure you watch part two of this series. We hope to see you soon.